For more on the legal and political implications of today's charges, let's bring in chief political analyst John Dickerson, chief election and campaign correspondent Robert Costa, and CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. Ricky, you've read through the indictment. What stood out to you? I think what stands out to me is I wanted to know what the nexus was. What's the connection between falsifying business records and what law was concealed? And what we've learned is that the government says that this was a conspiracy, in essence, an agreement of more than two people to keep information away from the voting public in 2016. So it's a federal election violation, a state election violation, as well as a mischaracterization for tax purposes. And there might be new witnesses, right? I think the new witnesses are the things that intrigue me most, because what we have here in order to prove this agreement or scheme is they talked about the CFO, that's Alan Weisselberg, they talked about the comptroller, they talk about the accounts payable supervisor. So these witnesses may have already testified or given information to the district attorney's office. And when you look at the allegations concerning Weisselberg, he's either a target or a witness. Really interesting, Robert Costa. Along with this indictment, there was a 13-page statement of fact filled with some really interesting details, and the timeline is important. Nora, when you read this statement of fact, there's another piece of history right here that in 2017, Trump's first year in the presidency, he was cutting checks to Michael Cohen in the Oval Office. So during his first year in office, while he's dealing with immense national security challenges and all of these other major issues, he's also, this statement of fact says, and this indictment says, at the center of a criminal scheme to pressure Michael Cohen to make these payments, to stay quiet. It is perhaps the closest criminality has come to this U.S. presidency since Richard Nixon. And John Dickerson, what does this mean for Donald Trump legally, politically, in the future? Well, politically, it's been sorted the way things always are with Donald Trump. His supporters rush to his aid, say he's the victim of a prosecutor. Those who are his detractors say no one is above the law. What was tantalizing about all these facts is we thought this would move into the legal realm, where reason, fact, argument can win the day. But that's going to take a very long time to work out. It may take a year or more. And that means this legal case raises the stakes, gets everybody talking in apocalyptic terms, but the political process is ongoing. The legal process is very slow. So the stakes are high, but nothing's going to happen legally to actually resolve those stakes. It's going to be an interesting couple of years. John Dickerson, Ricky Kleeman, Robert Costa, thank you.